You know, it's easy to say now when you look at the current WWE landscape and product that Vince McMahon is senile, he's out of touch, he's lost, he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing, and pretend like this is some new development, or pretend like this is something that's always been the case. But the reality is, is this is not the first time that Vince has been out of touch. This is not the first time that it was clear that Vince didn't know what the hell he was doing, and his company is a byproduct, didn't know what the hell they were doing. Yeah, recently in particular, it's been bad over a number of years. It really has been. Um, but when you look back at the early 90s, more so like that time frame of, let's say, 93 to 95, maybe early 96, I guess it's pretty much every bit as bad as what you got now. Really, really bad. And one thing I always dread about going back and watching some of these old WWF shows from that era of 93 to early mid 96 is I know there are a lot of clunkers and stinkers in there and traditionally one of those ones that's thought of as one of the biggest stinkers of all time for this company was King of the Ring 1995 and then let's get it clear here this shit sucked the booking was bad, the matches were bad, the decisions made within the booking were god-awful and atrocious. All you have to do is look at the King of the Ring winner, but even that in and of itself just doesn't speak to just how bad this truly was. You can look at Vince McMahon and frickin' Doc Hendricks. She took Michael P.S. Hayes of the Freebirds and made him an 80s parody of himself, called him Doc fucking Hendricks. Like, that just speaks to... 1995 WWF and just how bad this shit was and just how truly out of touch Vince was. Maybe he's just happy to be out of fucking harm's way in terms of the federal steroid trial and not taking on any prison time for himself. I don't know what the hell it was. But when you think about dark periods of wrestling and you can think about this period as a dark period in wrestling, specifically WWE, you also go back to this time frame and you say this was a company that was lost, that was rudderless, that did not know what the fuck they were doing. And you can point to King of the Ring 1995 and clearly see that to be true. The one thing I would say, though, is that the way sometimes this show has been talked about is one of the worst ever. It sucked and it was bad. But I feel like over the years you've seen so many other worst shows that this probably doesn't scratch the top 10, top 15, top 20. Hell, I'd probably even say top 40 or 50 of worst WWF slash E pay-per-views of all time. Does it? I mean, if you really think about it, there are notable things that make it really bad. Yes. But Christ, just in the past few years alone, how many really shitty bad pay-per-views this company has put on that you can point to and say that's worse than King of the Ring 1995, let alone throughout all of their history. So it was a bad show and it sucked and you should never ever fucking watch this because there's not even a lot of comedic value there. Like at least sometimes with really bad shitty shows and train wrecks, there's a comedic value, a train wreck appeal. This has none of this. This is just unmitigated total disaster. Like, like, to express to you just how stupid this shit was. Think about this. In the lead up to this, they eliminated Lex Luger, who they invested a shit ton in in the past year plus, almost two years. He wasn't even there for the finally. You have Owen Hart and Davey Boy Smith, two of the best acts that you have, two of the best wrestlers at the time that you have, in this tournament that is heavily featured in wrestling, that is heavily dependent upon the in-ring action, and you put them up against each other and have them work a 15-minute draw on Raw, so that way neither one of them is in the damn tournament. That makes no fucking sense. Meanwhile, you've got a guy who clearly at this point in time, in mid-1995, you've made the babyface turn with Shawn Michaels, and it's clear he's over like a million bucks relative to the time. It is clear that he's arguably the hottest act that you have. Arguably. He's the one that people want to get behind. He's one of them, at least. He's one of those dudes that you're going to sit there and you're saying, hey, we're putting him in a position. We're going to go with Sean. We're going to build towards Mania with him, and he's going to be the guy going forward. And you have him work a 15-minute time limit draw with Kama. 
So you take one of the great in-ring performers of your company at that time and of all times, and you put him in a 15-minute draw against Kama. So he's out after the quarterfinal round. The guy that had just won the Royal Rumble a few months ago, you didn't even have a win, win a fucking King of the Ring match. You had him work a draw with Kama. Really? And then... You get onto this situation where you get this big kick all of a sudden with Savio fucking Vega, who had just come into the fold, and you're like, Razor's not there, but this is Razor's buddy, and we're going to put... Like, all this other shit. Like, you tried to make Savio Be Vega into this big freaking underdog. You tried to make him the dude that everybody's going to get behind. And once you get past the surprise, surprise... Racist type shit that Michael P.S. Hayes was saying, talking about him and South Brooklyn and fucking stealing hubcaps and where the hell did any of that shit come from? But you freaking have Savio Vega take Razor Ramon's place. You put him over Yokozuna due to count out. You have him beat the roadie. Like that was one of your semifinals for King of the Ring, 1995, with Savio Vega versus the roadie. And then you have Savio Vega win and go on to the finals. God damn. You talk about bad, questionable, stupid decisions. What the fuck were they thinking? And then you talk about what I said about Shawn Michaels, which was true. Obviously, the other guy that was massively over was The Undertaker. Even after a few years of toiling away in mid-card hell with some of the shittiest feuds you would ever want to put on a great talent and a great character... He still somehow has overcome that, persevered that, survived, is thriving. And you job him out to fucking Mabel in the quarterfinals of the King of the Ring. Like, could you imagine the stupidity of putting together the draw here? And you say, yeah, we want Mabel to go out and beat Undertaker. And then we're going to give him a bye, which is probably because Mabel didn't know what the fuck he was doing. He didn't have the endurance to work three matches. So he had to create a gap so that way... Just unfucking believable here. You couldn't have put Taker and Shawn Michaels on the other side, so they could have at least eliminated each other, let's say, in the quarterfinals. At least the fans would have gotten a really damn good match. Like, Shawn did the best he could with Kama, bless his heart, but only so much you could do with some punches and rest holds for 15 fucking minutes. I mean, good lord, that just speaks a little bit to the stupidity of this show. Like, you have Savio Vega go on this run... He beats Erwin R. Scheister on the Coliseum home video version to be kind of the wrestling match. And he comes right back out. He beats Yokozuna. Then later on, he beats the roadie. So that way he can get squashed by Mabel. Oh, man. Yeah, this show is bad. This is really, really bad. Some For some reason, like, you talk about King of the Ring and who's Mr. King of the Ring. Well, in the early years, it was Jerry the King Waller and not in a good way. Because every year he was involved in some type of stupid shit, some type of stupid angle, some type of shitty, stupid fucking match. And it does beg the question, when you go back and think about it, like especially if you didn't grow up watching Memphis wrestling, was Jerry the King Waller actually ever any good in the ring? Or was he all about character and heat back in the Memphis days? Because even when you watch him here, like his matches sucked. They sucked. And this shit certainly wasn't any fucking different. Here comes fucking Hakushi. Oh, Christ almighty. The kiss my foot match. Like what? Oh my. Like this is what you were doing with Bret Hart. This is one of your biggest stars of the company. You just got to give Lawler a fucking King of the Ring spot, don't you? I understand you probably had a dearth of top heels that could get some heat here. But this really the fucking direction you wanted to go? And it was so bad. It was so bad. This just show was so bad. You also got to remember this show is notable for something else. When you get to the Mabel versus Savio Vega King of the Ring final match, you had Hat Guy and you had Vlad the fan. All those guys there started chanting ECW, ECW during this match because this was bullshit and everybody fucking knew it there in Philly to the point Vince is like, hey, what is that? And I mean, the fans let him have it. ECW, ECW and... You know, it was a notable moment in history. You know, we point back to that as the thing of like, it really opened Vince's eyes to the potential of like, hey, there's another company here in Philadelphia you need to start paying attention to. 
there's another company that's evoking these types of emotions out of fans. Like, this type of shit did not happen. Fans didn't go to WWF shows in that day and start chanting for WCW or other company. But here in Philly in 95, they sure as fuck did chant ECW because this shit was horseshit. Like, it was so bad, your main event of a King of the Ring, at a time where you didn't run a shit ton of pay-per-views, your main event at the time, just think about this, you were just starting the In Your House concept, your main event of this pay-per-view was a tag match featuring Bam Bam and Diesel, who was your champ at the time, beating Psycho Sid and Tatanka, who were part of Money, Inc. That was your main event. Sometimes you point to Diesel, you talk about Kevin Nash, now he didn't draw as a champion. When you talk about taking a guy and chopping his fucking legs out from under him and chopping his balls off, you wonder why a guy can't fucking draw. You look at matches like this and say, what the fuck are you doing? Imagine how much better this would be is if you would have went with Diesel versus Bam Bam one-on-one -on -one for the title. Or Diesel versus Psycho Sid, for God's sakes, for the title. Either of those would be much more appealing and more interesting options than what the hell we actually got here. I mean, this was so bad. So, so bad. So Razor Ramon didn't work at all. Shawn Michaels was eliminated in a 15-minute time draw with Kama. Just think about this. I'm talking about some of the notable people in this company at this time. Some of the standard bearers. Some of the really good talent. Top talent that you had. Razor Ramon didn't work the goddamn show. Owen and Davey weren't there because they were eliminated early on in the fucking process. Bret Hart was wasting his time in another shitty stipulation match with freaking Jerry the King Waller. Shawn Michaels is wrestling a 15-minute draw with Kama, so he's eliminated in the quarterfinals a few months after he had won the Royal Rumble when you would think the fans are really getting behind him, so you want to build him out. No, no, we want to build up fucking Mabel. We want to have a black Yokozuna. Undertaker. You'd think, hey, maybe the fans are ready for him because they're really behind him. No, no, no. We got to job him out to the black Yokozuna. You got Yoko sitting there jobbing out to Savio Vega. It just... You got Diesel working a tag match as the champion in the main event. Just everything about this sucked. And still, I would strongly dispute that this is one of the 10 or 15 or whatever worst WWF pay-per-views of all time. Oh, it was bad. It sucked. And there's absolutely no redeeming qualities about it. Not one of these matches is good. Every single booking decision will piss you off. Like, just everything about it was so goddamn bad. The only thing notable about it is the ECW chance. And when Mabel won his King of the Ring, people were throwing shit at him because they fucking hated it because they knew it was trash. And it's no surprise when you look back at this event why he did such a shitty buy rate because think about it, 1995, if you saw this card, would you buy this shit? Hell no, you fucking wouldn't. It's easily one of the worst King of the Rings. Probably is. That I'll give it. Because God, this is fucking terrible. And as we're going back and watching shows like this, it makes me really question, like, why the hell would I ever miss this show concept? Why do I miss the King of the Ring pay-per-view? Maybe because I also remember shows like 1996 and 1998. And next time, I'll talk about King of the Ring 1996, which obviously is a signature, significant moment in WWF history.